seven day at Venice, that means really, really different. That means Saturday I rested. But if heaven got a ghetto, tell me, do it, got a guess this. So you sheep or you just shepherd, obedient or desperate? Cause God Peace, how are you here. doing, Tori? I'm good, how Thank are you? Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. Thank you for coming. I'm so excited to learn about you, to hear about what you do. Will you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Def Sound, which is short for Definitive Sound. Uh, an artist from South Central Los Angeles, uh, born, watered, and raised there. I'm an artist, poet, uh, cultural worker, designer, all the hyphens and the slashes. Yeah. But really what I try to do um, is just decorate time and space because mm. that's really all we have. Mm, I love that. And I'm curious, what does Pride Month mean to you? Yeah, so what does Pride Month mean to me? I, I feel like I'm a part of the plus community because mm -hmm. uh, my, my pronouns are he, him, they, them. Mm. And I'm really embracing the plurality and the multitudes that live within me. And uh, for me, Pride Month means the celebration of whole self. Mm. of wholeness, mm -hmm. of being able to be present without apology. Mm. I love that. How do you feel your identity um, has influenced your creative process, what you do? I feel like my identity is very inseparable from what it is that I create and what goes into it. And for me, I feel like with words, I'm a collage artist. Mm. So I'm sampling and looping that idea or that conversation or uh, that interaction and um, reading a lot. <laughs> and like, so everything is kind of a download. And I feel like what I wanna make sure is with every song that I create, everything that I share, that what it is is actually a selfie. Mm. So in that moment, like the newest selfie has to be updated. Right. So if now I feel grounded more in myself, that's gonna come through, that's gonna show mm. sonically. Mm -hmm. And I hope, you know, uh, resonate with others it's that vulnerable. they can be themselves. It's a vulnerable process. Oof, absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So with your, you know, all your different mediums and your way of expression that you've mentioned, um, in regards to music, what do you feel, like how would you define the genre or what you create? Where does mm. it fall into for you? Yeah, to me it's genre fluid. Mm. Uh, I feel that the kind of music that I play, I play the words, the words as an instrument. I use my DAW as an instrument and mm. a DAW is just like if it's Ableton or Logic, whichever it is, that is an instrument itself and it has infinite possibilities. Mm. And uh, I believe that what I'm doing is play. Yeah. And I'm at play with every single material, all the sources. There's nothing that I make that is just me. I consent to being in relation with everything before me. And I think that's what hip hop is. Mm -hmm. I think hip hop exists because what it's able to do is incorporate everything that's existed before it. Mm. Whatever drum happened before, mm. whatever like string section, you can bring all that in to a space and actually have the ghosts in those machines mm. and be able to, uh, I don't know, they, you bring it with you. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's fun to be in conversation with something ancestral, something spiritual, something that you're conjuring and you have no idea how people are going to respond to that. Absolutely. But even, it's fun. Even how you would respond to it flowing through you sometimes. That could Absolutely. Even, you know, shock your system in a beautiful way. Oh yeah, every time. I love that. Every time. So how important do you feel it is to let your listeners know how you identify? When you're putting your music out there, when you're putting your creative energy out into the world, do you feel any need to express, you know, how you identify in this community, in this world, mm. as a human being? I think that's a very interesting question because I really didn't identify as queer before COVID. Mm. I think I had time to actually sit with myself and look at the data, right. <laughs> you know, and I'm looking at the data and I'm just like, you know, at some point you're like, oh, I'm just an ally. Oh, I'm, you know, somebody that's pulling up for other people and that, you know, I would be asked like, why is it, you know, how, how is it that this, you know, cis black man in hip hop is pulling up 
for uh, trans people or, you know, um, other queer people. And it's just so natural and so seamless. And for me, it really came down to not just letting myself be defined by sexuality. Right. But by feeling. Mm -hmm. And feeling that there is more. Like there's a plurality, there's a multitude within myself. Absolutely. That I have to actually become real with and, and look at and, and be in conversation. And now I have more range. Now I can mm. really be the full expression. That's of the how best, I feel. similar to your doll that you're talking about. Yeah. The limitless possibilities. And yeah. especially once you differentiate, you know, gender and sexuality and how they're not the same. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I think there can be a, a conflation. Right. And gender is just a performance. Right. So my performance has range. Do you feel that, as you say, during COVID, this is something where like the seed has been in the soil. You kind of are looking at, you're being confronted with this expansion mm -hmm. that has always been within. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that coming forward about that into the world, are you being met with any resistance in the hip hop community, let's say, or, you know, has it affected in any which direction your creative process and your fan base or people who listen to you? No, I actually think it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I think it makes sense if, if you see how my music has progressed. Mm. And I love that, like I call my catalog a datalog. I love that you're able to see the growth and you're able to see mm. the expansion of even the collaborators. Yeah. And it's not something that I'm checking off any boxes. It's like, who do I resonate with? Who do I feel safe with? Because these are secrets. When I'm writing on that piece of paper, these mm -hmm. are secrets. So the people that I'm working with and that provide those canvases, right? I have to feel safe with them and they have to feel safe with me. Absolutely. And that's an ongoing thing. But uh, I'm looking forward to the confrontations like yeah. that are going to happen. Like it's going to happen. The friction, I yeah. mean, it's energy. Yeah. It's yeah. important, it's yeah. all important. So I haven't seen it yet, but they didn't like me anyway. So who do you feel like your musical influences are? Also just, you know, your musical heroes. Mm. Um. I feel like my musical heroes have always been people that took the genre and then pushed it forward. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, someone like Andre 3000 definitely was always pushing that pushing. boundary. Uh, I mean, Kay Trinata. Mm. I think Kay Trinata really pushed the dance music to another level. Absolutely. Um, and I just feel like um, I'm, I feel like I'm also surrounded like, I feel like my peers push me forward, like Suzy Analog, like uh, La Femme Bear. I'm just surrounded by a beautiful <laughs> community of artists that are um, ready to actually shift more narratives and paradigms. Mm. And uh, I'm just like really happy that they're my friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like that they said yes when I DM'd them. And <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's a trust thing. So uh, I really, yeah. Yeah, I really think it's an expansive thing, and I'm really interested in those that are ready to build stories on top of the stories that are already here. So who do you feel has paved the way historically in the LGBTQ plus community? I mean, more names than I could ever recall. Yeah. Uh, but I will say James Baldwin is somebody mm. that I look to and always has some kind of gem. There's always a interview I haven't seen <laughs> where he's just going off mm. in these ways that I feel honored to be able to witness. Uh, I think Marlon Riggs, uh, that's also a uh, queer filmmaker that, I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's called Ethnic Notions. And uh, it's a really powerful film. Also, Serpent with Feet, there's, I mean, I just feel like history is also taking place in the present. Yeah. And so let's shout out mm -hmm. those artists that are doing that, those historic feats mm -hmm. that are giving us new samples and examples to sample. So how do you feel like you've been able to maintain that connection virtually on the lockdown, you know? I've been able to maintain that connection by maintaining my own curiosity Mm. Um, by meeting people where they're at. Uh, I think two things that I've done during this time that are new. Um, at first, I was really 
excited about like sharing new music but kind of like how do i do that during this time and what i did was i hacked my way to excitement when thinking about if i share this video like how do i get this to people and so i just what i what i asked my friends to do was listen to the song for the first time and film themselves Ooh. because that's what i missed about live shows right and so that's the struck video. So we stay connected in that way, mm. right? And then um, the, the, another way I think is uh, listening parties that we had with our friends via Zoom. We just listened to every new album that came out. And so I started doing that as well um, on a larger scale with Virtual Care Lab, something called um, Sonic Tarot Society, so STS. I want to talk about post-COVID, what's been going on in our world you know, how that's influenced your creative process. Let's talk uh, intersectionality. Like, how, how has that come up for you in your work? And share that with us. Yeah, I think that there's no way that we can remain silent about what we see at this point. There's no more distractions. And in the song that I have called Mesquite T, which is kind of like about the weight of identity and all the weight that we just uh, haven't really talked about, I have, I, have a, I have a passage in there. Middle passing us this message. South Central gotta rep it. I know my mind's a lethal weapon. I keep my energy directed. Done buying what they sold to us. Done with the hip hop homophobia. Listen, black liberation means no transphobia. I'm really about that freedom, bro. I'm really about that, ah. So don't let it go over your head like yarmulkes over dreads or top bunks of the beds, I said. If black lives matter, we got to live. If all black lives matter, then we really got to live. And when I say live, that's also the queering of that word. We got to live because they want us dead. Mm. So we have to live. Wow. I have chills all over my body. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for that. Yeah, I'm just taking it a song at a time, honestly. I just put out a project in November called Human, um, spelled H-U-E-M underscore N, because cool. there's space, right? Like, mm. let's build space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to having something out on Juneteenth. Oh, yeah. It's called a song, a song called Unlimited, produced by uh, Kenny Zhao, and I'm really proud of that one. Thank you so much, Deaf Sound, for being here with Vox Amplification and myself in celebration of Pride Month. I am so grateful, a gradient of gratitude <laughs> for this platform, and uh, thanks for accepting me. Oh, man. It's nice. Infinitely. <laughs>